हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम अगेन फ्रेंड्स दिस वीडियो इज स्पेशली मैंट फॉर दोज स्टूडेंट्स हु आर द न्यू लर्नर्स ऑफ इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज एंड लिटरेचर फ्रेंड्स एज यू हैव चोजन इंग्लिश लिटरेचर एज योर मेन और मेजर सब्जेक्ट इन योर ग्रेजुएशन रिमेंबर यू मस्ट हैव सम बेसिक आइडिया अबाउट various things of literature say for example you must understand what a literature is what are the important characteristics of literature what is plot character theme setting you know dialogues and all these things also at the same time you must have some knowledge some basic knowledge about different movements of english literature as found in the history of english literature in the same manner you must have some basic idea about what a novel is what a short story what a a, a play is what an essay is in english right and at the same time the most important thing that you must know as the student of english literature is the history of english literature you must know how english literature originated in the olden times and how it developed through different ages and that's the reason why friends in this video today we want to discuss the history of english literature right from the beginning till the 21st century so we are going to make a kind of a uh, uh, survey we are going to have a glimpse at the whole history of english literature friends after having finished your graduation and post graduation when you apply you know for the post of a lecturer you know these basic things are generally asked in your written exam and also in the interview and that's why this video i believe is going to be very helpful for all the students of english literature friends now let's start let's begin to see how english literature originated in the olden times friends to understand the whole history of english literature first try to understand that english as a separate language you know existed in the anglo saxon period it is also known as the old english period in fact the language english language that we people are using in today's times you know it was not the same kind of english in the olden times the period from the 5th century till 11th century to be specific 450 to 1066 this small period you know is considered as the period of old english language it is also known as the anglo saxon period and this was the language in in this period which was spoken by the people in england you know that language was the original english language and during this period you know it is said it is believed by the historians of english language and literature that english language emerged during this period no doubt you know oral english literature was existing you know it existed even before this period some songs in oral tradition were were sung by the people but when we are talking about literature literature means something which is written that literature in written form came into existence in english language during this old english or anglo saxon period it is believed that cadmans hymn 
you know composed during the 17th century is considered as the oldest surviving poem in english literature okay so remember this title cadman's hymn this is considered as the first composed written form you know of poem in english language which was written during the 7th 7th century at the same time the poem the epic poem beowulf is also famous it is a famous work during this old english period written in english language and it is a narrative poem so these two works during the old english period old english uh, written in the old english language are considered as the early works of english literature but if you come to the middle english period because the whole english language is divided the development of english language is divided into three broad categories old english middle english and modern english okay if you talk about the middle english period that begins from the 11th century and runs till 15th century or 16th century during this period we have the father of english poetry in fact he is also known as the father of english literature and that is geoffrey chaucer geoffrey chaucer lived in england during the 14th century and he has written the canterbury tales the canterbury tales is a collection of po- of stories written in poetic form you know published during the 14th century and it is a narrative kind of poetry so geoffrey chaucer friends you remember this is considered as the father of english literature the first most important poet of the whole english literature in the late 15th century the first english printer william caxton also came on the screen and the invention of the typewriter during this 15th century proved to be a boon proved to be a blessing to the writers of english literature because before the 15th century printing technology was not available and that's why you know literature was not printed it was not easily available to the readers but now when printing technology started during the 15th century developed during the 15th century you know there was an abundance of output of english literature there were many writers mass number of writers they started writing literature why because printing technology made the books available easily to the readers and that's why you know the readers also increased by heaps and bounds okay so william caxton is considered as an important literary personality in the development of english literature he himself printed four fifth of his works in english language not only this he translated a large number of works into english from greek and from latin he translated these works into english and published them for the readers caxton translated about 26 of the titles himself right so now the greek literature the latin literature the french literature was also easily available to the readers of england why because they were available in english translation but if you come to the 16th century this is considered as the golden period in the whole history of english literature the period between 1500 to 1660 this period of 160 years is considered as the period of renaissance friends renaissance is a movement which we find in english literature renaissance is a french term it means 
rebirth or revival it is a movement which actually began in italy during the 14th century then it traveled to france and then it came to england and other parts of europe okay the the important features of this movement are individualism materialism humanism love for the country adventure romanticism interest in greek learning all these are the important facets of this movement called renaissance which we find in england during the 16th century but this 160 years of renaissance period can be divided into three four small periods and that uh one of the small periods is 1558 to 1603 and this period is considered as the age of queen elizabeth queen elizabeth ruled on england during this period that's why this period friends is known as the elizabethan age it is also known as the age of william shakespeare because William Shakespeare was the most dominant literary man of England during this period. William Shakespeare and also Christopher Marlowe they wrote fantastic you know tragedies during this Elizabethan age. We know William Shakespeare has written more than 32 plays and he has he has also written some sonnets 154 sonnets hamlet macbeth king lear and othello these are considered as the most poignant four tragedies of the whole english literature not only this christopher marlowe who is also considered as the guru as the teacher to william shakespeare has also written four great tragedies during his lifetime and they are Dr Faustus the Jew of Malta Tamburlaine and Edward the 2 at at the same time you know William Shakespeare and Christopher Marlowe with this there were some other writers like Edmund Spenser and Philip Sidney who produced fantastic poetry in the field of poetry i can say that no one can surpass you know the poetic techniques of edmund spenser edmund spenser wrote the fairy queen which is considered as an epic in fact it is a debatable issue it is a controversial issue you know most of the critics unanimously do not agree with this idea whether it, the fairy queen written by edmund spenser is the is is considered as an epic or not but the fairy queen amorati sonnets written by edmund spenser shafford's calendar the pastoral tragedy written by spenser this you know brought about a uh, a huge number of new readers in english literature during this period university weeks was a group of writers living in england during this period friends i have uh, prepared one separate video for the contribution on the contribution of university wits to english literature if you really like you know you may watch that video also so university wits which was headed by christopher marlowe they also produced plays and poetry but all in all you know drama and poetry became the major forms the most Uh, popular forms of english literature during this period romantic comedies were written by william shakespeare tragic comedies uh, which is a mixture of a tragedy and a comedy they became popular at the same time some historical romances were also uh, written during this period then the next important period is jacobian age jacob jacobian age begins from 1603 to 1625 it is a small period you know in which william shakespeare's later tragedies which he wrote towards the end of his life 
they became very popular ben johnson an important playwright of the elizabethan age also you know published his satirical plays his plays were full of satire full of intelligence full of wit and walpole is very popular which was published in 1606 at the same time john webster came on the screen during this jacobian age and he made a new type of tragedy popular among the readers and that is known as the revenge tragedies they are no they are also known as melodrama so revenge tragedies melodramas and comedy of humor which was popularized by ben johnson they became popular during this jacobian age and at the same time don't forget to remember john dunn's contribution in the field of english poetry john dunn reacted against the romantic poetry of the elizabethan age the previous period during the previous period william shakespeare edmund spenser sir philip sidney they were writing fantastic romantic lyrics the romantic sonnets but john dunn was not satisfied with this romanticism in poetry and he reacted against those this kind of romantic poetry and he innovated a new kind of poetry in english literature during this jacobian age and that is known as metaphysical poetry so friends john dunn became the pioneer of metaphysical poetry in english literature the next important age or period is caroline age caroline period it begins from 1625 and ends in 1649 the important periods of this age again are john milton friends please remember this name why because in the whole english literature whole history of english literature you know there is only one epic epic means mahakavya there is only one epic which is considered as a perfect epic and that is written by john milton john milton friends he was a blind poet though he was blind he wrote two epics paradise lost and paradise regained but unfortunately his second epic paradise regained remains incomplete and he dies at the same time you know apart from paradise lost and paradise regained we he has also contributed to english literature by writing some beautiful sonnets apart from john dunn you know during this caroline age we have other very important poets like richard lovelace john suckling thomas carew robert herrick and so many others there was a prose writer also who was writing prose literature religio medici was published by sir thomas brown so prose also became popular during this caroline age then the next period is commonwealth period commonwealth period is from 1649 to 1660 it is a small period of some 11 years and during this period thomas hobbes who was a political philosopher he published leviathan in 1651 Jeremy Taylor he published Holy Living and he also published a prose sermon Holy Dying okay at the same time you know the meta metaphysical poetry which was popularized by John Dunn in the previous period you know the it became popular in this period also and one and Andrew Marvel they continued writing this metaphysical poetry which was pioneered by john dunn in the previous age and here friends the influence of renaissance you know if you remember in my previous slide i told you that the period from 1500 uh, 
1660. This period of 160 years is considered as the period of Renaissance and here this movement of Renaissance comes to the end and Elizabethan Romanticism also comes to a close by this time. So all Romanticism of English literature comes to the end in 1660. Why? why romanticism ended because now a new movement began in english literature in the next period friends the next period is considered as the age of neoclassicism it is also known as the neoclassical period begins from 1660 to 1785 this period, which is a very long period, is considered as the age of reason, as the age of intellect, age of satire, age of realism. Here, most of the writers, you know, they followed the ancient writers, ancient poets. They strictly followed the rules, norms as devised by the ancient critics like Aristotle and Plato. Okay, and that's why they are known as classical poets or neoclassical poets. You know, they imitated the classical writers and this literature produced during this neoclassical period appeals to our intellect, it does not appeal to our heart. And this is the main difference between the literature which was produced during the period of Renaissance and the literature produced during this neoclassical period. The pe period of Renaissance was full of Romanticism, that literature, and it appealed our heart. But this literature of the neoclassical period, you know, it is full of satire, it is full of wit and intelligence, and it appeals our mind, not our heart. Okay. During this period, two most important forms became popular, and they were essays and novels. Let's now divide this whole long period into small periods and that small period, the first small period of this neoclassical age is the age of restoration. It is also known as the age of reason and satire and also known as the age of John Dryden from 1660 to 1700. This small period of 40 years is considered as the age of John Dryden. Why? Because John Dryden was the most important dominant literary personality of England during this time. Comedy of manners became very popular during this period. It is a type of comedy. What is a comedy of manner? If you want to understand that in detail, then I have, I have prepared one special video on comedy of manners which you can watch later on in my channel. John Dryden, he wrote many satirical poems like Absalom and Achitophel. You know, it is a satire on contemporary political situation. He also wrote the poem Medal which is an attack on Shaftesbury. Then he wrote MacPlecanu which is a biting satire, biting attack on his own friend Thomas Shadwell. Okay? Religio Lacy and the Hind and the Panther are also doctrinal poems written by him. At the same time, you know, poetry was popular, Brahma was popular during this period, but at the same time, there was one writer called John Bunyan who was writing prose literature and he published Pilgrim's Pro Progress. Pilgrim's Progress is a Christian allegory of human life and this became so popular in England, you know, that every Christian has one copy of Pilgrim's Progress at his or her home. Okay. So, in the field of prose literature, we have John Bunyan. 
Then the next age is the Augustan age, which is also known as the age of Alexander Pope. This period begins from 1700 and ends in 1745. Alexander Pope and John Dryden in the field of poetry, they made their distinct contribution during this period. Also in the Jonathan Sweet, Richard Still, Joseph Edison in the field of prose, you know, Particularly, I must talk about Richard Steele and Joseph Edison because in the beginning of the 18th century, you know, in the year 1709, the Tatler was first published and the Spectator was published in 1711. You know, there was a rise of periodical essays in the first half of the 18th century and the credit goes to these two writers, two prose writers, Richard Still and Joseph Edison. Friends, if you want to understand in detail about the rise of periodical essays in English literature, I have also made another video on this development of periodical essays in English literature. You can watch it later in my channel. But if you come to the second half of the 18th century, then that second half is is considered as the age of novels. If you divide the whole 18th century into two parts, the first half 50 years and the second half 50 years, then you can say that the first half of 50 years is the period of periodical essays, Richard Still and Joseph Edison. But if you come to the second half of the 18th century, then it is known as the age of novels. The first novel in the whole entire history of English literature was published in 1741 by written by Samuel Richardson and that first novel was Pamela and then later on you know novel, novel developed very much in English literature. If you come to the next period this period is known as the age of Dr. Samuel Johnson. It is also known as the age of sensibility from 1745 to 1798. Dr. Johnson, who is an important lexicographer and a critic of English literature, he, for the first time, the first dictionary of English language was prepared by this personality Dr. Samuel Johnson and that first dictionary was published in 1755. And as I told you, during the second half of 18th century, novel became very popular form. Important novelists of this age were Samuel Richardson, Oliver Goldsmith, Horace Walpole, Lawrence Stern and many more. And you know, after this age, we are going to have a look at one another golden period of English literature, English Romanticism, and that is the period of Romantic Revival. But this, the, the roots of this Romanticism, the new Romanticism in English literature are, are found in the second half of this 18th century during the age of sensibility. James Thompson, who published The Seasons. The Seasons is the title of the collection of his poems. So James Thompson, Thomas Gray, William Collins, William Blake, Robert Burns, William Cowper, George Craig. These were some important poets who were still, you know, struggling to make the poetry popular among the readers. Why? Because most of the readers, they wished to read novels and periodical essays. So it was not a good time for the poets this 18th century. But when we come to this age, Romantic Revival, the period from 1798 to 1830, then we, re we realize that this is the time, this is the period of popularity of poetry again. 
friends the first romanticism which you find in english literature is during the elizabethan age important poets were william shakespeare edmund spenser and philip sidney and the second period of romanticism in english literature is 1798 to 1830 which is known as also as the age of william wordsworth during this romantic revival you know wordsworth for the first time published his lyrical ballads in 1798 and this is the landmark in the entire history of english literature william wordsworth john keats you know keats who is known as the poet of love wordsworth known as the poet of nature uh, p b shelley astley coleridge known as the poet of supernatural they published so many hundreds of fantastic lyrics full of romanticism and what is this romanticism romanticism means return to past it means love for nature it means expression of personal emotions and imagination of the poets in romantic literature in romantic poetry you know rustic language is used by the people language of the common man is is used by the writers okay and love for nature these are some of the important characteristics of romanticism friends after this period again you know from 1830 to 1900 a long period of 70 years is known as the age of queen victoria or the victorian age it is also known as the age of lord alfred tennyson friends alfred tennyson became the poet laureate of england during this period alfred tennyson with robert browning you know they published lyrics full of fantasy and novels continued to be popular during this age also because i told you in the second half of the 18th century novels became popular and in the beginning of the 19th century again novels continued to be popular the important novelists of this period are william thackeray charles dickens bronte sisters george eliot thomas hardy william thackeray and many more then friends we come to the modern age the next period from 1900 to 1945 is known as the modern age in english literature it is also known as the age of t s eliot thomas stearns eliot why because eliot was an extraordinary literary personality of english literature during this modern age there were many famous modernists you know uh, including t s eliot and ezra pound who made the popular made uh, english poetry popular during this in the beginning of the 20th century Virginia Woolf, Ernest Hemingway, William Faulkner, James Joyce, they were the important novelists of this modern age. In the beginning of because the beginning of this 20th century is known as the period of science and technology. It it is also known as the period of the development of psychology. So psychology and technology they influenced english literature and as a result we have a new kind of fiction new kind of novel which came into existence during this period which is known as the science fiction which was developed and innovated by h g wells in the same manner as i told you psychology also influenced the development of psychology also influenced in the beginning of uh, 20th century it influenced english novels and a new kind of novel came into existence which is known as the psychological novels it is also known as the stream of consciousness novels and virginia woolf is considered as the pioneer of these 
kinds of psychological novels. Berthold Brach, Harold Pinter, they were the important dramatists of this modernism. Existentialism, an impact of two world wars, science, technology, psychology, all these things influenced English literature of this modern age. And friends, this is the last period of English literature, which is known as the age of postmodernism. From here, there is a typing mistake, friends. Uh, this age of postmodernism begins from 1945, not 1645, 1945 onwards in today's, till today's times. This last period is known as the postmodernism, age of postmodernism. T. S. Eliot, Morrison, Bernard Shaw, Beckett, Stafford, Pauls, Calvino, and many more, you know, these are the postmodernist writers and poets and playwrights of English literature. They innovated novels, you know, they started experiment, experimenting with the novels, so metafiction and a new kind of poetry, fragmented poetry, came into existence in the hands of these writers. Postmodernist literature you know, it reached its peak in the 1960s and 1970s when Catch-22 was published by Joseph Heller. Okay, and at the same time, Lost in the Fun House and Sought Wheel Factor, published by John Barr, also are considered as the important landmarks in the entire history of English literature. So friends, here we come to the end of this tour to the history of English literature. Let's recollect the whole discussion in two minutes by saying that the whole English literature begins, you know, you can divide the, the development of English literature into three broad categories, three broad periods. Old English, which is known as Anglo-Saxon period, okay. Uh, from uh, 5th century till 11th century, which is known as the Old English period. Okay, not much literature was produced during this time. Remember Geoffrey Chaucer, uh, who wrote during the 14th century. He comes during the Middle Ages, right, from 11th to 15th century. And then 15th century onwards is considered as the modern English language period and actual development of English literature begins in this last period that begins from 16th century. So friends, here I end this discussion. If you have any doubts and queries, do write to me in the comment section of this channel. Thank you. Thank you very much.